Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Today's ceremony will be simultaneously interpreted. Korean speakers, please don your headsets at this time. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of General Paul J. LaCamera, United States Forces Korea Commander, welcome to the 8th Army Change of Command Ceremony. We would like to welcome the following distinguished guests. General Charles Flynn, Commander, United States Pacific Command. Command Sergeant Major Scott Burzak, United States Pacific Command. Command Sergeant Major Jack Love, United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, United States Forces Command, Korea. Lieutenant General David Iverson, Commander, 7th Air Force, Deputy Commander, United States Forces, Korea. Miss Joy Sakurai, Deputy Chief of Mission, United States Embassy. General Shen Chul Kong, Deputy Commander, Combined Forces Command. General Shik Son, Commander, Ground Operations Command. General Retired Ho Yong Lim, President, Korea United States Alliance Foundation, former Deputy Commander, Combined Forces Command. General Retired Jong Hwan Park, former Chief of Staff of the Republic of Korea Armory. General Retired Byung Suk On, former Deputy Commander, Combined Forces Command. Chairman Kyung Shik Son, Chairman CJ Group. Scholar Yon Soon Ha, President Kungak Foundation. Mayor Jong Son Jung, Mayor Pyeongtaek. Mayor Kyung Hui Park, Mayor Asan. Mayor Kwon Jae Lee, Mayor Osan. Commissioner General Gi Hyun Hong, Commissioner General Gyeonggi Nambu Police Ad Agency. Other distinguished guests, families, friends, and soldiers of 8th Army. Today, the 8th Army bids farewell to Lieutenant General Willard Burleson and formally welcomes Lieutenant General Christopher Leneve. During today's change of command ceremony, Lieutenant General Burleson will relinquish duties as the 8th Army Commander to Lieutenant General Leneve. Providing the music for today's ceremony, the Combined Forces Band, comprised of the 8th Army Band, commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Richard Chapman, the Republic of Korea Navy Symphonic Band, commanded by Major Lee Duk Jin, and drum majored by Sergeant First Class Redentor Aladia. Represented on the field today by their colors, from left to right, are 8th Army Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion, led by Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Gardner and Command Sergeant Major Deshaun Hamilton. 2nd Rock U.S. Combined Division, led by Major General William Taylor and Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Franco. 19th Expeditionary Support Command, led by Brigadier General Frederick Christ and Command Sergeant Major Alfonso Green. 1st Signal Brigade, led by Colonel Christopher McClure and Command Sergeant Major Nicholas Curry. 35th Air Defense Artillery Brigade, led by Colonel Kevin Stonerook and Command Sergeant Major Richard Piles. The United Nations Command Color Guard, under the direction of the 8th Army Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Robin Bulmer. 65th Medical Brigade, led by Colonel Lee Burnett and Command Sergeant Major Eric Price. 501st Military Intelligence Brigade, led by Colonel Lisa Winnegar and Command Sergeant Major Gary Bouchard. 411th Contracting Support Brigade, led by Colonel Anthony Rogers and Command Sergeant Major Nakia Harris. 403rd Army Field Support Brigade, led by Colonel Henry Brown and Command Sergeant Major Cedric Harvey. 3rd Battlefield Coordination Detachment, led by Colonel Jeremy Linney and Command Sergeant Major Artie Harold. United States Army Garrison Yongson Casey, led by Colonel Lloyd Brown and Command Sergeant Major William Fritzinger. United States Army Garrison Humphreys, led by Colonel Ryan Workman and Command Sergeant Major Monty Drummond. United States Army Garrison Daegu, led by Colonel David Henning and Command Sergeant Major Asgar Kamaluddin. The salute battery for today's ceremony is provided by the 3rd Field Artillery Regiment, 3rd Cavalry, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Kurt Nodler. The Honored NCO, 8th Army Pacific Victors Chapter of Sergeant Audie Murphy Club member, Sergeant Karen Nguyen of 176th Financial Management Support Unit, 19th ESC, is presenting a bouquet of red roses to Mrs. Cindy Burleson. The roses are in full bloom, which symbolizes our love and respect for her devotion and loyal support of 8th Army soldiers and their families. The Honored Junior Soldier, a General Pike Sun Yup Leadership Award recipient, Katusa Sergeant Choi Hyo Jun of 11th Engineer Battalion, 2nd Infantry Division Sustainment Brigade, 2nd Infantry Division, is presenting Mrs. Kimberly Leneve a bouquet of yellow rosebuds on behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of 8th Army. 
Yellow is the color of joy and friendship and symbolizes the relationship between 8th Army's soldiers and families. Shortly the rosebuds will blossom, as will the friendship that will blossom during Mrs. Leneve's time with 8th Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation delivered by the 8th Army Command Chaplain, Chaplain Sun Lee. Please join me a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we invoke your blessings upon this change of command. Those who are participants and those who are gathered here to witness the passing of the colors. As Lieutenant General Willard Burleson come to the end of his tenure as a commanding general of the 8th Army, we thank you for the leadership he has demonstrated to us and for the example he has set us for the follow. Lord, we bless him and his family in your name and ask that you prosper their transition to the new phase of life and enrich their future with happy successes. Lord, we ask you to grant our incoming commander, Lieutenant General Christopher Leniff, the gifts of wisdom, courage, and strength. May his time of command be one of the blessings for him and all the soldiers of the Eighth Army. And to you, Lord God, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the left side of the formation. There you will see the adjutant, Colonel Aaron Lummer, who will initiate the ceremony with sound attention. As the 8th Army Band, a cornerstone of military tradition and musical excellence, joins forces with the Republic of Korea Navy Symphonic Band to perform Sound Off, we witness a remarkable fusion of history, honor, and international camaraderie. This performance, especially during the significant moment of the 8th Army Change of Command ceremony, symbolizes more than just a musical collaboration. It represents the enduring alliance and shared values between the United States and the Republic of Korea. Originally constituted in 1916, the 8th Army Band has a storied legacy, beginning as the band section for the 35th Infantry Regiment. Through its reorganization in November 1950 as the 8th United States Army Band in the Republic of Korea, it has stood the test of time and conflict. Notably, during the Korean War, the band distinguished itself, earning the Meritorious Unit Commendation and two Republic of Korea Presidential Citations for its exceptional service. In April of 2022, the band was further recognized with the Army Superior Unit Award, highlighting its continued excellence and dedication. Today, comprised of 41 highly skilled soldiers, the 8th Army Band is the only musical unit west of the international dateline and represents both 8th Army, the Usurpak Theater Army in the Indo-Pacific region. The sound off, a call to arms and a prelude to ceremonial proceedings, carries with it centuries of military tradition. It serves not only as a signal for soldiers to gather, but also as a display of the discipline, precision, and spirit of the armed forces. The rendition of sound off by the combined forces of the 8th Army Band and the Republic of Korea Navy Symphonic Band for this change of command ceremony is historic. It marks the first occasion a combined band has performed for such an event, showcasing the depth of cooperation and mutual respect between our nation's military forces. 
This collaboration is emblematic of the ROC U.S. Alliance's strength and the profound interoperability of our two militaries' intersection of decisive land and naval power in integrated deterrence. Over the last three years, these units have demonstrated their collective capabilities through numerous performances, each time reinforcing the bonds of friendship and alliance between our nations. Today's joint performance is not only a celebration of musical prowess, but a public affirmation of our shared commitment to peace, stability, and prosperity in a free and open Indo-Pacific. As we look towards the future, the alliance between the Republic of Korea and the United States stands as a beacon of international partnership. It is a relationship built on mutual respect, shared values, and a unified vision for a peaceful and prosperous world. The combined performance of the 8th Army Band and the Republic of Korea Navy Symphonic Band is a testament to the enduring alliance, one team serving as a symbol of a strong alliance and a mutual commitment to defense in the most consequential theater, in the most consequential time in our shared history. At this time, the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Colonel Scott McClellan, the 8th Army Chief of Staff, will take his place on the field with the 8th Army Staff, which includes Colonel Aaron Lummer, G1, Colonel Paul Staheli, G3, Colonel Joseph Greenlee, G4, and Colonel Leslie Thompson, G6. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of honors. 
As a reminder, as the band plays honors, all military personnel will render a hand salute. The official party consists of General Paul J. LaCamera, United States Forces Korea Commander, Lieutenant General Willard Burleson, the 8th Army Commander, and Lieutenant General Christopher Leneve, incoming 8th Army Commander. For today's ceremony, General LaCamera has deferred honors to Lieutenant General Burleson. Sound present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Captain Lincoln Mallinger of 2ID Davarty is presenting Lieutenant General Burleson with a salute casing from today's Salute Battery Honors. <laughs> At this time, the official party will take the field to conduct inspection of the troops. Army activated at Memphis, Tennessee on June 10th, 1944 and deployed to the Southwest Pacific from December 26, 1944 until August 15th, 1945. Collectively, the five Victor operations launched by 8th Army would result in the liberation of the southern and central portions of the Philippine archipelago. From February 19th to April 3rd, 1945, 8th Army units conducted 14 major amphibious assaults and 24 minor landings. During this 44-day period, 8th Army averaged an assault landing every day and a half. Subsequently, it earned the nickname Amphibious 8th. With the surrender of the Japanese Empire on August 15th, 1945, 8th Army led the Army of Occupation into Japan. On December 31st, 1945, 8th Army assumed the expanded role in the occupation of disarmament, demilitarization, and democratization. With the outbreak of hostilities in Korea on June 25th, 1950, 8th Army would face another major challenge due to the tactical situation that existed during the first six weeks of the Korean War. Lieutenant General Walton H. Walker ordered his command to withdraw behind the Nokdong River and established defensive perimeter around Pusan represented a defining moment in the Korean War and set the stage for the UN counteroffensive. The breakout from the Pusan perimeter and the amphibious assault at Incheon on September 15, 1950, resulted in the collapse of the entire North Korean People's Army. On October 19th, the North Korean capital of Pyongyang was captured and 8th Army began its end of the war offensive. On November 25th, the intervention of the Chinese People's Volunteer Army changed the character of the war and forced 8th Army and 10 Corps to transition to the defense. 
With the advantage of surprise and numerical superiority, the CPVA launched multiple attacks that expelled friendly forces from North Korea, and on January 4, 1951, Seoul would change hands for the third time within a six-month period. On March 15, 1951, Seoul was recaptured for the fourth and last time. By the end of the month, 8th Army reached the 38th parallel and three weeks later established defensive positions. By the spring of 1951, both opposing forces had concluded that the issue of achieving a decisive military victory was no longer a viable option. However, the Chinese communists were determined to launch one last major effort to capture Seoul. Once this was achieved, they would advocate a ceasefire. With the capital of South Korea in their hands, the communists would be in an enviable position to negotiate an armistice favorable to their own terms. The fifth phase Chinese offensive, April 22nd through July 8th, 1951, qualified as the largest ground action of the Korean War. During this two-phased campaign, the Chinese People's Volunteer Army failed miserably to achieve its primary objective and sustained catastrophic losses in the process. By the summer of 1951, the situation on the ground had developed into a holding action and initiation of peace negotiations began. The history of the Korean War truce talks began on July 10, 1951 and after two years of dialogue, an armistice was finally consummated on July 27, 1953, formally suspending full-scale hostilities on the peninsula. As the post-armistice period began, 8th Army assisted the Republic of Korea in relief and rehabilitation efforts and supported the common defense of South Korea. Today, there is no evidence to suggest that North Korea has abandoned its choice of unifying the peninsula by force of arms. To enhance and sustain mission accomplishment, the force structure of 8th Army has transformed multiple times during World War II. It fought in the Pacific Theater of Operations as a field army. In the immediate post-World War II era, 8th Army served in Japan as an army of occupation. During the Korean War, 8th Army served as both a field army and theater army, and throughout the preponderance of the Cold War, it remained primarily a theater army. On 20 November 1954, it was merged with U.S. Army forces Far East as the major army command in the region. On 1 July 1957, Army Forces Far East was discontinued and United States Forces Korea was officially activated. Thus, 8th Army was consolidated with USFK and the United Nations Command with headquarters in Seoul. On 7 November 1978, General John W. Vesey Jr. assumed command of the newly established ROC U.S. Combined Forces Command while serving concurrently as the commander of UNC and USFK and as the commanding general 8th Army. On 1 December 1992, 8th Army reverted to a three-star command billet and was separated from UNC, USFK, CFC. On 13 March 1998, 8th Army was designated as the Army Service Component Command for USFK. This status was discontinued on 23 January 2012 when 8th Army was redesignated as an operational level field army headquarters. 8th Army headquarters completed its transition to Camp Humphreys on 11 July 2017 until an effective and enduring mechanism is secured, which will guarantee a lasting peace in the land of the morning calm. 8th Army's mission will remain the same, to deter North Korean aggression against the Republic of Korea and to prevent a renewal of hostilities. Should deterrence fail, 8th Army will defeat in detail any external threat directed against South Korea.
You are now seeing a movement known as Colors Center March. This activity stems from early Roman days when the leaders laid down their weapons and shields and came forward to their emperor. By doing so, the leaders signified to the emperor that the officers of their command were loyal to him. In early American cavalry tradition, it was used to give troops special instructions prior to going into battle. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthems of the Republic of Korea and the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the official party will take the field to conduct the passing of the 8th Army Colors. 
The colors represent not only the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its soldiers. They are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. The change of command ceremony is a military ceremony that is rich with symbolism and heritage dating back to medieval times. Soldiers often carried staffs or standards into battle that identified them as a unit. Throughout military history, unit colors have marked the position of the commander on the battlefield and served as a rallying point. Whether attacking or rallying, soldiers would follow the standard or guidons of their leader, most often found at the forward edge of the battle. In more recent times, the colors represent not only the heritage and history of the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, the colors are there as well. The passing of unit colors represent the transfer of authority and responsibility from one commander to another. The command sergeant major is the keeper of the colors. As the senior enlisted soldier in the unit, he is the spokesman for both the loyalty and concerns of the soldiers and is the principal advisor to the commander. The passing of the colors from Command Sergeant Major Bulmer to Lieutenant General Burleson signifies his last act of allegiance to him. Lieutenant General Burleson passes the colors to General La Camera, signifying that the unit is never without officer leadership. The passing of the colors from General La Camera to Lieutenant General Leneve signifies the passing of his trust and also the responsibility for the unit and its soldiers. In accordance with AR 600-20, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of 8th Army, effective 5 April 2024, signed Lieutenant General Christopher Leneve. Ladies and gentlemen, General Paul J. LaCamera, United States Forces, Korea, Commander. Oh, what a beautiful day. Good morning. I'm going to try and sum up 36, 40 plus years in uniform here in the next couple of minutes. I don't possess the vocabulary to do that. Good morning, fellow general officers, senior enlisted leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen most importantly to the Burleson and the Lineage families. Thank you for joining us on this momentous occasion as we recognize the lifelong service of an amazing commander, soldier, warrior, father, husband, and friend. We also have the unique pleasure of welcoming the new commander of the 8th Army and the Chief of Staff of the Combined Forces Command. I wonder which hat you'll want to wear. Uh, to the soldiers who stand before you, but more importantly, who stand ready to fight, tonight and defend our way of life. Thank you, Bravo Zulu. Sergeant Major Bull, Bulmer, they look great. Please join me in a round of applause for those who stand The title commander carries with it the inherent responsibility to lead and care for one of our nation's greatest treasures, the sons and daughters of our countries. Not all who enter service will have this opportunity to carry the mantle of this title, and few will do it as well as General Bill Burleson. From rifle platoon leader to 8th Army Commanding General, he wore green tabs both on and off the battlefield. We can also do what we do because of our amazing family support and our family support structure and those who quietly serve and rarely get credit for their sacrifices. Please join me in a round of applause for our families. Cindy, Matt, and Beth, thank you for all you've done and continue to do to support your husband and father. 
Your sacrifices often go unnoticed, but you should know how grateful I am, and we all are, for your resolute and selfless service and sacrifices that made Bill's service possible. Matt, you have big shoes to fill, Burleson 3.0. <laughs> Thanks for traveling from your duties in Europe to celebrate this very, very special day. Please join me in a round of applause to recognize the distinguished Burleson family. <laughs> Colonel Douglas MacArthur once said that a true leader has the confidence to stand alone and the courage to make tough decisions and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one of the equality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. It's my belief that this describes the life and the career of General Thurlson. Bill, from the time you were a young military child through the ceremony today, you've been an amazing example of honor, courage, duty, integrity, and sacrifice, and professionalism. You should be proud of your distinguished career, and your leadership be, will be felt as an enduring legacy in the United States Army, the Combined Forces Command, and in the Eighth Army. From our families to yours, we wish you and your family the absolute best as you begin a new chapter of your life, which I believe involves you opening a bakery or something. <laughs> best of luck to you, my friend. I know you have patro we've patrolled the same ground before, but never at the same time. I'm lucky to have conducted this last patrol with you <laughs> on Freedom's Frontier. Pacific victors, Rangers lead the way to the top. We say farewell to Lieutenant General Burleson, and we have another outstanding leader taking the colors today. Or he took the colors today. General Chris, Chris, Chris Leneve is no stranger to leading our nation's best and brightest. I would like to welcome him and his wife, Kim, and his children, Caitlin and Chris, both of whom are currently serving in the Army. Chris, you are inheriting an exceptional team of warriors who represent the United States and Korea with ex extraordinary pride. It is through your ex leadership and actions that this team will continue to excel. My charge to you is simple. You must accomplish your mission and take care of those you lead. The only thing they deserve is great leadership, and I know you will provide that and more. Thanks again to the 8th Army who made this magnificent ceremony to honor Gerald Burleson and his lifetime of service successful today. May God bless our alliance, our great nations, 8th Army, our fallen, and their families. Pacific victors fight tonight. At this time, we would like to invite Lieutenant General Burleson and his spouse Cindy to join General LaCamera at the front of the reviewing stand. Lieutenant General Burleson was commissioned in the Army as an infantry officer in 1988. Over his 36 years of service, he has served in various leadership positions, including platoon leader, company commander, battalion commander, brigade commander, division commander, culminating as the commander of 8th Army. In recognition of his retirement, General LaCamera will present Lieutenant General Burleson the Distinguished Service Medal. The citation reads, for exceptionally meritorious service to the government in a position of great responsibility over a 36-year career, culminating as the Commanding General, 8th Army, and Chief of Staff, Combined Forces Command, Republic of Korea. Lieutenant General Burleson's patriotism and unparalleled service leave a lasting legacy, and his distinctive accomplishments undoubtedly reflect distinct credit upon himself, the 8th Army, and the United States Army. He will also receive the Certificate of Retirement from the Chief of Staff of the United States Army, which states, this is to certify that Lieutenant General Willard Burleson III, having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army on the first day of June 2024. And he is also re receiving the flag of the United States of America for his years of faithful service to our nation.
Lieutenant General Burleson and his wife Cindy have been married for 34 years. Throughout these many years of marriage, Cindy has displayed unwavering support for the soldiers and families of the United States Army. For her years of dedicated service, Mrs. Cindy Burleson is awarded the Distinguished Public Service Medal. The citation reads, for outstanding public service supporting the soldiers, civilians, and families of the 8th Army, Republic of Korea, United States Combined Forces Command, United States Forces Korea, and the United States Army Garrisons in the Republic of Korea, Mrs. Burleson's distinctive accomplishments over 36 years as a dedicated volunteer to the military community are in keeping with the highest traditions of public service and reflect great credit on her, 8th Army, the Republic of Korea, United States Combined Forces Command, United States Forces Korea, and the United States Army. Mrs. Burleson is also receiving a Certificate of Appreciation from the Chief of Staff of the United States Army, which reads, This is to certify that Mrs. Cynthia A. Burleson, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Thank you, Lieutenant General Burleson and Cindy Burleson for your service to our nation. And thank you, General Camera and Mrs. Burleson. Members of the 8th Army Pacific Victors Chapter of Sergeant Audie Murphy Club will now present Lieutenant General Burleson with the encased 8th Army colors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the former 8th Army Commander and soon to be retired Lieutenant General Willard M. Burleson. General Cameron, thank you very much for your, your thoughtful remarks. I know Cindy and I are both grateful for you and, and Teresa's uh, friendship and leadership. I'd also like to say the same for General Flynn and, and send our best to Kathleen. Um, I also do want to recognize and appreciate the friendship of the former Chief of Staff of the Army of the Republic of Korea Army, General Park Chung Wong, and his wife, uh, Kim Won Soo. Thank you very much. But I really want to thank all of you in attendance today. Your presence here is a demonstration of your strong commitment to our Rock U.S. Alliance. And I'm also glad that you're here to welcome Lieutenant General Aneev and his wife, Kim. They're a great couple who I've known for many years. And Lieutenant General Neves' focus on training and caring for people will continue to increase our combined readiness here in the Republic of Korea. There are a number of leaders and friends here today in attendance. Too many of you for me to mention, but thank you all for your friendship and your professional commitment to our Rock U.S. Alliance. This past week, uh, I was reminded of the Battle of Osan, just down the road from here. And if you all remember, June of 1950, the United States Army sent Task Force Smith here to stand alongside the Korean Army to defeat aggression. But in that first battle in Osan, Americans learned the price of unpreparedness. We paid for it in blood and treasure. And over the course of three years of fighting, many American, Korean, and United Nations command lives were lost. But in the end, we prevailed. And the Rock U.S. Alliance that we have today stands as a testament to the sacrifices of those who have come before us, those that gave their lives, and the thousands that are still missing. They must be remembered always. Now, almost 74 years after that first battle, the group of soldiers that you see here out in front represent the nearly 35,000 American and Korean soldiers and civilians that are part of 8th Army today. 8th Army came in 1950 and never left. These soldiers stand ready to defend our homelands, the Republic of Korea and the United States. And being ready to fight tonight can't be just the same. It must be achieved through tough, realistic, and standards-based training, day and night. Readiness is perishable. And I want to thank all of those leaders out here to my front, but also the many others 
to ensure that we're able to maintain our readiness here in the Republic of Korea. As I mentioned previously, there's just too many people to thank. So I, I do want to thank all those in United States Forces Korea, 8th Army, and Combined Forces Command. Thank you for ensuring your commitment that we are ready. I also want to thank those on my personal staff, past and present, who even though I'm now retired and not out of command, are probably helping me keep me organized. Those responsibilities will still fall only to send me. Uh, most importantly, Command Sergeant Major Bulmer out there, you represent all our great non-commissioned officers that I've served with through the years. And I'm honored for you to be my last sergeant. Lastly, God has blessed me with many things, a supportive family. Cindy, two great kids, my son here today, my daughter in Dallas, both of whom I'm very proud of. Cindy and I were married 34 years ago this month, and I'm so grateful for all that she has done for soldiers and families. She supported me, but also been there for others during years of combat and deployments. I want to conclude by my remarks saying that I'm proud to be an American soldier. And my service here in the Republic of Korea has been the honor of a lifetime. Pacific Victors, Kaji Kapshida, Kapsan Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of 8th Army, Lieutenant General Christopher Leneve. Flynn, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Kim and I sincerely thank all of you for attending and sharing part of your day with the 8th Army. I'd first like to thank General McCammer and General Flynn for your leadership, your mentorship, and this incredible opportunity to command and support the missions of the United States Forces Korea the U.S. Army in the Pacific. General McCammer, I truly appreciate your words, and I welcome, and you're welcome to the Republic of Korea. I look forward to serving again with you. It's truly a unique opportunity to take command from a longtime friend, mentor, and leader that I have the utmost respect for. I'm deeply grateful for the warm reception you and Cindy have given Kim and I and the team you've built. I will, I will work hard to maintain the momentum you've established for 8th Army and CFC. But with Matt continuing to serve, and he looks just like you, there's no doubt that the Burleson's will continue to do great things for our Army in the future. Thank you, sir. Godspeed. I'd not be here where I am today without the grace of God, the support of my wife of 33 years, Kim, and the inspiration of two amazing children, Captain Caitlin Lanine and First Lieutenant Nick Lanine. Thank you for your love and continued support. I'm humbled and very honored to join the ranks of this storied Army formation. Pacific victors. I welcome this opportunity to serve with our rock allies and give my full effort in support of our ironclad commitment to the alliance between our nations. So our major, we look great today. God bless both of our great nations, the people who defend them and the families who support them. Kachi Kapsita, Pacific victors.